Next up, we have presentations from uh, Ireland's three symbol groups. I'd like to welcome on stage Rory O'Donnell from Comcare Symbol Group, which covers um, Total Health Pharmacy and Haven Pharmacy. We have Louise Martin from Unifar, which covers uh, Unifar Retail Services, Life Pharmacy, All Care Pharmacy, and Hickey's and Macaulay's Pharmacy, and Ashling Smith from Navi, which covers Care Plus, Stay Well, and the Axiom Wine Group. Louise, I think you're first up. I'm first up. What advantages do you see in joining, joining a symbol group? I think one of the real benefits of joining a symbol group is very much so strength in numbers. So you've got that powerhouse of, of a very strong team behind you. But I think also looking at it is you can be an excellent pharmacist. You can have worked in a pharmacy for, for many years. Or it might be your first time um, out of college going into in to, to take on that business. But you can be an amazing pharmacist, amazing with your patients, but this is going to be the first time you're potentially running your own business. And actually, running a business is different, and it's difficult. So I think the support that a symbol group and any of the groups that we have here today can help is invaluable. Um, one of the things I would say, one of the, the big advantages that we have is our territory managers, and we'll all have different versions of what a territory manager does. But in, in my view, your territory manager is that kind of coach on your shoulder who's coming in to meet with you nearly every four to six weeks. They're looking at, they've got a lot of management information, they have done their homework before they go in to see you, and they're looking at how is your business performing. And they're coming in to you every four to six weeks to say, look, this is what's going well, this is where there's opportunity. And also to, you know, you might be facing some challenges that they will have seen in, in other markets or in other, with other customers, and they are um, able to offer advice and support on those. Um, being part of, you know, everybody wants to build a profitable business. That's what we're all trying to do. Um, so the symbol groups will offer very strong kind of commercial uh, commercial deals to you. And um, that's looking across your Orex, your um, front of shop and your OTC. When you're looking at setting up your, your business, what does it look like? You may want to refit a store. They can offer advice on what a refit would look like. They can offer advice on what portfolio of products you should have in your store. So looking at, and again, you know, we're looking at back through um, the portfolio of pharmacies that we have in the group and actually what's going to fit and sit best in, in that area, in that location. Um, so it, there's a lot of advantages in terms of, of looking at that product portfolio. All of your, your office, your, your back office files from a front shop and an RX, your pricing, all of that is managed centrally. You don't need to worry about that. That's all done for you. And that can be, you know, a bit of a headache in the background. Um, the strong promotions that, that the teams will put in place as well for you. So again, you're, you know, there's a team working in office for you, making sure that you have a strong commercial offering, be that on retail and on the RX site. Um, and you've got a support team there as well in terms of if you need training. We know it's difficult to, in this market, to retain staff as well. So there's a full training module that can be offered there as support um, to make sure you're developing your people so they will stay with you. Um, there's support there from a superintendent perspective. So if you've got particular challenges within your store, there's a team there that can talk to you and, and offer advice. And then there's also the management information systems that we have to really help you in terms of understand your business. They're at, you know, that's at the, 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 the click of a button mm. for you. So, um, but the big part is that strength in numbers. You know, you're, the market, I think, in pharmacy is going to change dramatically in the, over the next number of years. More change, I think, in the next five years than we've seen in the last 25 years. Um, so having that, that powerhouse, I think, behind you just in terms of, of commercially and that strength is really going to help. And Rory, how, was, how have the recent um, you know, supply chain issues, as you know, Paul and Marin have said, affected your, your members? Well, we've actually heard an awful lot of the dynamics from the two wholesalers, and it's very interesting to, just to hear that perspective. Um, as recently as yesterday, as a working pharmacist in, in West Donegal, I had some very, very difficult situations with patients who were not just among those perhaps who were uh, au fait with the, with the shortages, maybe hadn't encountered them before and had real serious and acute issues uh, in, in, in the fact that they weren't going to, or their, their loved ones were going to have difficulties uh, in accessing these medicines. Um, I suppose, like, if you think of a single uh, owner-operator pharmacist anywhere in the country who is not affiliated to, to a symbol group or, or anything else, I can only imagine how, difficulty, how difficult that must be for them. I, I have to say I'm very lucky. We haven't solved all the issues within Comcare, but we, we, we absolutely have. I can only imagine how, how much worse it would be were I not 
uh, affiliated with, with, with a group like ComCare, where like, we have the support of other owner-operator pharmacists who will not only lend stock, uh, g give um, business intelligence information to each other, share, share resources. I've had pharmacists uh, share other pharmacists with me when I needed them. Like we have, we've got an awful lot of that as well. But also within the group, you have bulk buying, you have the ability of scale, uh, where uh, cr cross orders can be can be provided to members. We have the business intelligence to, to look over the horizon, perhaps, just to see where shortages are going to happen because of our relationships with the suppliers. We, we have a good understanding of it, and allocations can be renegotiated re uh, as well where necessary with for members. I suppose it comes back to the strength in numbers, you know, as, as Louise mentioned. Yeah. Ashling, technology is forever evolving, and with the advancement of AI, how do you see this shaping the pharmacy sector? So I suppose, yeah, pharmacy probably hasn't been the fastest industry to adapt to technology. Um, I mean, I think in the last number of years, there has been great strides forward. When you look back, it's not that long ago that we were getting faxes through with PI pricing. So I suppose there, there has been good strides forward. In terms of the adoption of AI, I think in, in, at an independent pharmacy level, it is a little bit more difficult to integrate. Um, I suppose the biggest challenge that we have is so many standalone systems in pharmacy. When you look at an independent pharmacy, there could be as much as 20 systems that are not fully integrated with each other. And that's where utilizing AI becomes much more difficult. When you want to maximize the benefits from AI, you need really clean data to be working with. And you need very clear, I suppose, conditional formats in the background. But when you have so many systems that aren't talking to each other seamlessly, that can be challenging. I suppose in Navi, technology is very much an area that we focus on quite heavily. And I suppose our goal is to try and connect those disconnected systems in pharmacy. So in the last two years, we've um, launched a dispensary system and an EPOS system. And I suppose our goal is to get those systems talking to, to each other more seamlessly and be able to utilize AI more where we have started making inroads is with the health mail integration, we're taking some of the patient um, information coming over from health mail and linking that to patient records on the dispensary system. But I suppose I do see AI having huge benefits in the future in terms of order management. Paul touched on it slightly where we can more accurately predict orders, um, manage where we know there might be disruptions in the market. At the moment, you know, if somebody hears something is going short, it's fast as fingers first, everyone buys as much as they can, and it has negative knock-on effects for everyone else. So I see AI being able to support with that quite a lot. In terms of patient safety, I think there's a huge amount of work that can be done with AI to utilise and make sure that what we're dispensing, um, I suppose, is benefiting the patient most. So I definitely see uh, AI playing a big part, but I think there's a little bit of work to be done to just make sure that when we're using AI, I suppose the data needs to be very clear. And in, uh, in pharmacy, there's a lot of systems that aren't fully integrated at the moment. So I suppose that's where symbol groups will have an advantage in, I suppose, supporting independent pharmacy to achieve that. It's not something that people will be able to do by themselves. Very good. And Louise, how, how have the recent labour shortages affected, affected your members? <coughs> um, I think if we go back to... I started in this role in uni for four years. I started in this role two years ago. And um, one of the biggest challenges we had was pharmacists and, and locum, locum pharmacists. And, and that was the, the year of kind of the great resignation post-COVID. But it was a really challenging time um, for us. And, and what we would have seen with our members is that they were working, if their pharmacy was open five, six, seven days, they were working all the time in front line in, in the pharmacy. So that meant then they were trying to do maybe the admin at night time or potentially weren't getting to, 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 to get the admin. And we know... Um, that pharmacy is very um, admin heavy, right? There's a lot of paperwork that needs to get done. So you had, and also we saw some of the pharmacies, some of them closed at lunchtime, some of them changed their opening hours, and some of them actually have kept that, you know, they've, they've kept that in place. 
Um, but it was, there was a lot of burnout, which has been well documented, but a, a lot of burnout um, with pharmacists. But what I suppose where, where you can, if you're part of a symbol group, you had that support that you still had. While it was very challenging frontline, you had then your, your territory manager going in to be able to offer you that support in that very, um, in, in that challenging time. And what we've seen since then is a lot of the pharmacist teams actually said, I don't want to be in this position again. I don't want to have to work around the clock and the pressure that that put on themselves from a business perspective and also from a personal perspective. And many of them actually looked to strengthen their, their pharmacy team. So when there was more pharmacists available and they were able to recruit more pharmacists, they actually took that opportunity to bring in more pharmacists or to look at technicians within their business. So that means now, I suppose, coming into flu season, they potentially have a little bit more capacity within their pharmacies to um, offer more vaccines within the community and also to take the advantage of that in, in their store. And then obviously we have the common conditions coming. We'd love to know exactly what, what it's going to be. But when that comes, they'll also have a little bit more, um, more time and more people within the pharmacy. And we will always offer, you know, we will always offer advice on what is the right kind of payroll versus the number of items that you're doing. So there's the benchmarking there, should the owner want to, want to look at it. But I think we're, we're probably through a lot of the, the pharmacist piece now. The next challenge for us is technicians and, and just the, the availability of technicians in the market is becoming more and more challenging. So, you know, we're saying to try to, to grow your own, look within your pharmacies to see is there opportunities um, for somebody who's working within front shop or on OTC. Actually, how do you enable them to, to train up to be a technician? Because I think that's going to be the next challenge. It's starting now, but you can see in 2025, that's probably going to be the next mm -hmm. challenge for us. I suppose, Rory, as a follow-on to that, you know, and the ongoing push to a service-led business, how do you envisage, you know, government policy will shape the future of the Irish pharmacy sector? Yeah, well, it's going to be very interesting just to mention of the common conditions. Um, what is it? Service, I suppose, <laughs> yeah. rather than scheme. We don't know if it's going to be a scheme, or hopefully it will be, obviously, um, a scheme, and a re a re it has to become a reimbursed or remunerated scheme, or it just simply won't work. Um, that whole area is, is obviously within the... the, the the remit of the, the IPU, etc. And there's hard, a lot of work going on in the background, as I understand, on that. Certainly at ComCare level, it's in our strategy that we will support our members to be patient-facing and to use the consulting rooms, etc., etc., and, uh, and to embrace these, these new services as and when they come. It's, in terms of government policy, right now we're in a very good place. The department is very positively disposed to pharmacy. It's taken a very long time. Um, there are those in the room uh, that I've seen here, haven't seen for a while, uh, who, who will remember working very hard. Um, many of us have been working a long, a long time to try and get uh, things to this place. We're in a very good place right now as a profession in terms of uh, po political will. Now, unfortunately, politics is a very fickle game, as we know, and, um, you know, there's a general election coming. Will, will the government policy still remain the same? Anybody's guess, and I hope it, I hope it will, and my sense of it is that it will continue, uh, because it makes sense for the patient, you know, where, 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 where they live, where they work, that they can have access to, to uh, pharmacist-led uh, healthcare. And the common ailment scheme or the common condition scheme or service uh, I expect to be only the very, very beginning. Obviously, the expert task force have reported that is a very good um, document. If anyone has not read it, please do. It's on the PSI website. It's on the IPU website as well, as far as I know. It's accessible. It's well worthwhile reading just to see what the future direction of pharmacy is in Ireland right now as things stand. We will have independent prescribing we will have the, the common condition scheme and hopefully the, all that will be remunerated. Now, the, the biggest barrier is uh, resources and that's not just the, the financial, it's also, it has been the issue with pharmacists, it has been the issue indeed with, with technicians, uh, manpower and everything else. All that gets cured and if some, some of the bureaucracy does need to disappear and I think the department, the HSE are well aware of that. Uh, a lot of ifs there, but we all have to shoulder to the wheel and make sure that this happens. Thanks, Roy. And, and Ashley, so for any entrant pharmacists in the room, what would your advice be, you know, if they're, if they're going to purchase their first pharmacy? Well, I suppose, uh, yeah, I'll probably repeat what was, has been said already today. Um, I, I think networking is probably one of the biggest and most important things that young pharmacists need to do. You know, reach out to partners like Fitzgerald Power, who have long-standing, strong relationships with pharmacy owners across the country. They know the short and long-term plans that 
these pharmacy owners have, and they will be able to advise you on different options that you have when you want to purchase. So maybe because you don't feel like you have enough capital straight away, you know, that is not a reason that you shouldn't reach out. As was discussed today, there's many models and investment models that can enable you to enter into the pharmacy market. In terms of, I suppose, linking in with all the other big players as well, you know, there's a huge amount of big players in the industry that have a lot of touch points with independent pharmacies in the market. So in Navi ourselves, we have 560 Axiom customers. We have eight business development managers on the road who are in and out of pharmacies on a four-week to six-weekly basis. Again, they will know what the long-term plans of pharmacy owners are. So link in with these people, and I suppose it's being able to marry up relationships where maybe there's a suitable young pharmacist to partner with somebody who is looking to sell and then investment models can be discussed on the back of that. But I suppose it is networking and making sure that you're establishing the correct partnerships. Um, I mean, there's a huge amount of people in the industry with a huge amount of information on what is happening at an independent pharmacy level. I think that would probably be number one. And then I suppose when you do acquire your new pharmacy, make sure and utilize some of the supports in the industry. The most important thing for you will be growing and establishing the business that you are after, I suppose, acquiring. Don't spend all the time in the back with pieces of paper. Try and allow, I suppose, symbol groups to come in and do a lot of the work that they have the scale and power to do for you. You know, it's going into vaccine season. You do not want to be sitting there writing up SOPs and consent forms. Allow some of the groups to provide you with that service so you can spend time engaging with the community and building and growing your own business. Thanks so very much. No, thanks, yeah. Ashley. Any, any questions from the floor for, for any of the guys? You got away. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.